ever had a great idea and not acted on it or maybe hesitated to share it with your boss or your team at work? I have, and it is such a drag when someone else comes up with the exact same idea and everyone just goes crazy over it. And you're like, darn. Hi, I'm Deborah Poneman, founder of Yes to Success Seminars, where we share knowledge and tools for you to live your ultimate life. Do you know that an idea comes to you because it wants to be manifested by you? That's why we all have different ideas. I have the ones that I'm supposed to manifest, and you have the ones that you're supposed to manifest. And ideas come to you at a time when the world needs your idea. See, I kind of believe that the creator looks down uh, for someone who's going to do a good job at doing his or her work on earth and the creator, spirit, source, God of your understanding. I mean, that spirit can't come down and start teaching yoga. So here she chooses someone who can and whispers in your ear, Lisa, can you please teach a yoga class for women over 65? Or Jane, can you please teach women how to have more self-confidence? Or Kim, I need you to start a vegetarian restaurant in that underserved neighborhood. Or Sam, you can start a website where you sell gluten-free bakery products. I'll help you out. Got it? Or Joanne, can you please run for the U.S. Senate? You see, God has no hands but yours, and whatever that whisper is, it's needed now for the world to work. So if you don't act on it, that opportunity is going to go to somebody else who will. How many of you have had the experience where somebody came out with a great idea for a book or a business, and you're like, I had that idea. Well, yeah, you did, but you didn't do anything about it. So, and you don't even need to know the how. Just take the first step. Remember that quote from Martin Luther King, you don't need to see the whole staircase to take the first step. That idea comes to you because it was your idea to manifest. And I know I've shared this with you before, but it bears repeating. <laughs> How do I say it? Maybe I'll say it in a different way. Okay. It's a very important principle of creating success. And that is, don't tell everyone you're, what you're going to do until you started doing it. What is sacred must be kept secret and your precious ideas are sacred. So every time you tell somebody what you're going to do, you're less likely to do it. Let me tell you why. You know how you have steam in a kettle, but every time you open it a little bit, you let the steam out so it never really, you know, like blows up and starts whistling like crazy, right? Every time you tell somebody what you're going to do, it takes the pressure off. You're letting steam out of the kettle. And what happens is, is that we share too early because we want outside approval. We want people to say, oh, what a brilliant idea. But what happens is that also when you share your idea, the discouragement committee shows up and tells you all the reasons your idea won't work. And then all the wind is knocked out of your sails even before you start. Now, I know that this is the opposite of what every guru tells you, all these success gurus, share and your friends will hold you accountable. Come on, when has that ever worked? <laughs> when has anybody held you accountable? Only you can hold yourself accountable. And only on rare occasions do people um, <clears throat> say to you, how are you doing? Because you know what's happening? They're too busy going around letting this team out of their kettle. They're too busy going around telling people about their book idea that they're never going to write or the business they're never going to start because they're letting the steam out of their kettles. One of my favorite uh, truths is those who talk don't do. Those who do don't talk. What is sacred must be kept secret. Now, if you do want to have an accountability partner that you trust a thousand percent will not be the discouragement committee, maybe you can share your idea with them. But be careful because sometimes you're going to run into um, a wolf in sheep's clothing. 
All right. And I don't believe not to tell somebody what you're going to do because they're going to steal your idea. The truth is there could be a thousand people doing the same thing that you do. Thousands talk on women's empowerment, thousands talk on success, thousands write books on spiritual truths. I actually endorsed probably two or three books in the last week or two on spiritual truths, but they're not you. You see, there are people who are waiting to hear the message from you, to be coached by you, to buy the real estate from you, to purchase the aroma sprays from you, to have an image consultation from you, to get the investment advice from you. And they are waiting patiently to have their life transformed by you, no matter how many other people are doing the same thing. You're their person and they're waiting for you. So when the discouragement committee shows up and tells you that there are already too many people teaching sales or too many people writing book on, books on power or too many of the thousand and one other things people will tell you won't work when you tell them your sacred ideas, that happens, you thank them for sharing. And then what you do is you use their negativity as what is called inspirational dissatisfaction. Use it as an inspiration to make sure you do that thing and you knock it out of the park. So speak up at work. Your idea might make all the difference in the company. So don't be afraid to share your ideas. The worst thing that can happen is that it'll be a no, big deal, next idea. But again, the real worst that can happen is that you are so afraid to speak up for fear of rejection, so you don't. And then later someone shares your idea and they are the big hero of the day. And darn, you had that same idea six months ago. Oh, well. And don't wait until you think you're ready. You will never think you're ready. There are always loose ends. We live in a relative universe. People who change the world don't wait until everything is in place. Just take a step from which there is no turning back. When I started my Yes to Success company, I was broke. I was in my 20s. The only thing I had done in my adult life was teach meditation. And I had one job and that was selling investments. And I was not exactly a huge success. So when I had the idea to start the seminar company, I had to do something so I wouldn't chicken out. So I rented a room and I put up posters because that's what we do in the in those days. My name was, was Olson at the time, Deborah Olson, to give seminar on saying yes to success. And believe me, when I put up the posters, I hadn't told anybody what I was doing, what was sacred was kept secret in my life. But when I did put up the posters, the discouragement committee came out and drove saying that no one was going to believe a crazy idea like your thoughts have the power to manifest your reality. But the room was already rented. I already took a step from which there is no turning back and the posters are already up. And if I hadn't taken that step, that step from which there is no turning back, there would be no yes to success today. And you wouldn't be listening to me. As Theodore Roosevelt once said, in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best is the wrong thing. The worst thing you could do is nothing. So you just have to be more committed to your vision than you are to being in your comfort zone. So, and more about that next time. But for now, have a great week and take a couple of those steps from which there are no turning back. There's no turning back. Bye for now.